Hello everybody. Today is Wednesday, August 4th. This is Ben Capozzi with Broad Shoulders Farm in beautiful Halifax County, Virginia. Zone 7. Hi Wheezies. It's a, a lovely morning. It's about 10 30. I'm going to show you all um, some new friends who arrived here at the farm. Hi Wheezies. No, not geese, but new chicks. Wonderful new littles from Murray McMurray Hatchery. Uh, should be 19 in here. Um, I haven't done a full count. I'll do that as I take them all out. But, but there's no DOAs. Nobody even looks um, unwell. Everybody looks really happy. So um, let's get started. Um, these littles are going to start laying around, well, mid to late winter, so January, February, maybe March, maybe December. Um, and uh, of course they've arrived here in the dog days of August, which is what I was counting on, for it to be nice and uh, temperatures to continue to be in the 90s like they have been. And yet, today, the day they arrive, is the coldest day of the week. Uh, it's about 81 today is the high, and the low is going to be about 69. By Sunday, we'll be back up into the 90s. Uh, as I've talked about in other videos, um, we don't have reliable electric out here at the farm. So, uh, I've been relying on timing and uh, passive heat um, in order to keep uh, my chicks uh, happy and healthy. So, um, knowing that the weather was going to be like this, I spent the weekend and yesterday and day before just kind of thinking about what I could do and I went through a couple different design ideas and uh, let me show you all kind of easy for this one, next littlest one um, those were hatched here this year along with six others uh, we lost one and then five went to live with some friends ooh hey I gotta put you in a body stocking to pin that wing back all right I'll take care of that later um, okay, so let me show you what we came up with. Excuse the mess. <laughs> um, I was thinking about building a new structure and all that, and of course there's no shortage of structures that need to be built, but I already had a structure in the, uh, the new waterfowl house um, that also is always really warm when I go in there. Uh, and when we first built this and I set up the roof, uh, I had it all solid and then I was like, oh, it's so dark in here. It's gloomy. So I put in these extra panels of uh, uh, the corrugated greenhouse clear PVC stuff and uh, Put two there and two there and it keeps the insides of the houses very bright and it also keeps them very warm uh, like I get uh, Really sweaty when I'm in there. So I was like, well, let's go with what we got uh, Hey stitches. You guys remember stitches? If you pay attention to the Instagram stories, you know Stitches had a maggot infestation. He had a poopy butt, and then he got fly struck, and he had like a giant injury back there. And um, fortunately, I saw him fast enough, and I got him cleaned up, and I cut off a bunch of his tail feathers in order to get at it. But that was two or three months ago now. He is doing great. Hey, Stitches. So, uh, I had this roll of inferior... Uh, Greenhouse plastic. I say inferior because that's not what it's designed for. This stuff breaks down in a season. Um, I bought it at Lowe's, um, and it's it's really not worth it if you want anything that's going to last. And not only does it not last, but when it breaks down, it just like leaves just like terrible plastic chunks like everywhere. And the more you try to deal with them, the more they break up. So it sucks. So get true greenhouse plastic if you're going to do a greenhouse. Um, I recommend AM Leonard. Hey, your video's coming up in a minute. So, but I still had that and I didn't want to let it go completely to waste. I was like, oh, I've got this and this is a great way to keep heat in and uh, warm things up. So, I did a very simple jerry-rigged setup in here where I came in, I took a big sheet and I stapled it to the roof and I stapled it down on the sides and I brought in all fresh straw bedding because of course we have merricks here on the farm though the ducks and the geese are of uh, waterfowl are immune to merricks they may still be carrying it in their dander um just from roaming around the farm we also have a bunch of chickens who run around in here so i wanted to lay down a fresh base 
even though these chicks are vaccinated. I only bring in vaccinated animals now, uh, and I vaccinate any chicks that are naturally hatched here at the farm uh, if I can. I've got two littles running around that are unvaccinated. Um, so, I'll show you what I set up. This is actually where I was setting up and brooded um, some new Guinea teammates as well as some new Cayuga ducklings. Talk about them in another video later. But, ta-da, this is my fort that I set up. So, even though today is kind of overcast, it's still gonna let in some light and heat. I can feel that it's probably five degrees warmer in here. Um, it's not, you know, 95 like it should be, but it's pretty good. Um, and uh, the heat, uh, traps in here, they're free from a draft. Um, and they'll be down in this box, which I've already got their feed and their water in there with um, some homemade uh, magic water. So it's got uh, garlic and honey and apple cider vinegar in there. And then I've got it surrounded by straw. And I'm gonna go to uh, a store today and see if I can pick up some of those um, hand warmer packs that hunters use. Um, and I've even got a, excuse me, got a friend told me that uh, they make some uh, <laughs> battery controlled um, sock warmers. So I'm thinking about getting those. So anyhow, I'm going to go and look and see. Um, I think that they will be okay, but you know, it's, it's always a risk. I'm running a risk. Um, and uh, I wish it wasn't so. I wish I had a better setup, but I don't. I had to come up with something and this is what I've come up with. So let me go and get the chicks. I'll flip the camera around and we'll start bringing them in and I'll talk about who is joining the flock. Whew. The sun came back out and it's already getting hot in here. Hopefully it'll be hot enough for the little. So let's talk about what we've got. Hi, hello. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> All right, so let's see who we've got here. This little blue devil, I'm guessing, is a straight run blue Americana. McMurray, these are all from McMurray Hatchery, and McMurray's got a new um, true blue uh, line of uh, Americanas that they say are among uh, their best bred uh, qualities. And um, we were getting really low on blue and green eggs. So uh, this little, I'm gonna say fellow, honestly, just looking at the wings, but it's hard to tell. Um, lad or lady is going to be a, a vital part of the flock. And if it's a gal, she'll be laying eggs coming up. Uh, all of these should be laying eggs this winter. Hello, Bart. So I put her in, I dip her in the water. Give her that first drink, and away she goes. Who's this? This, I think, is a Fayumi. And um, I added a couple Fayumis, two females and a male. And I have uh, two in uh, one of the other grow-out pens. Well, I had two. One, uh, unfortunately, died after catching a chill in the rain. But um, Egyptian Fayumis um, are a naturally Merix-resistant breed, um, which I'm kind of excited about getting those genes into um, my flock. Hello, little lad or lassie. Here's the water. Boop. There you go. Oh my good. Sorry, guys. I'm going to take my hat off because it's hot in here. It's getting hot in here. Uh, this little fellow, I'm guessing, because I feel like I can see a little bit of a tuft little crest coming on up here. Uh, this is one of two crevacore males that we ordered. Um, I have uh, three or four Crevacore females already, including um, Pomp, who is out with the main laying flock, and she's about ready to retire. Look at Bart checking out these chicks. Bart loves hidey holes. Um, I, mean, I know there's a video on my Instagram feed from a while ago, but he finds little forts, and then he goes and he climbs into them and he sings. Um, anyhow. But yeah, um, I want to make more crevicores and we only have females, so I've ordered two males. I had a beautiful one who was taken by um, a predator in the rooster run earlier this spring. Uh, he was a survivor of the Merrick's outbreak and um, gosh, he was handsome. So this little devil, 
Alright, here you go. The replacement. Where the other one is, oh, it's right here. So here's the other one. You can see a little bit of a tuft there, little head. I hope this is lining up well for the camera, I'm sorry. If it's not, boop, there you go. I really like little old um, old French breeds. Um, Faverolles, Crevacores, um, they're my favorites. I don't know, it kind of um, conforms to a like a, a pastoral image of kind of like romantic French countryside and um, heirloom vegetables and foods and eggs and breeds from uh, from a different time. Okay, let's see who else is here. Hi. I think this is another one of the true blue Americanas. Here's some water. Hello. Boop. And here you go. Oh, who are you? This looks like a little cochin with these really heavy feet. I don't recall ordering. What have I got that's... Oh. Huh. I did order two uh, black longshans, and um, I don't know if this is kind of blue or not, but black uh, splash and blue are all kind of variations of the black team, but I'm wondering if this is my surprise chick and it's a little coaching boy. Uh, that's my guess. I don't think this is a longshan. I don't think longshan's feet are this feathered this young, but I could be wrong. Maybe this is one of the coachings, but I don't think so. Water, boop, there you go. Oh, let me see here. Nice. I think this is one of the Niederreiners. Niederreiners. Now, they're an auto-sexing breed, and I did order three. Two here are this more kind of golden color. I'm thinking they are the pullets, and the paler one is the boy, or... Maybe the opposite of that. I'm not sure yet with Nido Reiners. But I do have um, three uh, grown up ones in the pen. You guys, if you follow my YouTube video or uh, Instagram, you've seen Reinhardt. Reinhardt? Sorry, I can sweat my eyes. So I think these are my Nido Reiners. Hi. Come here. Boop. There you go. And some people wet their feet. I, um, I just dip their beak. Boop. There you go. There's food at the other end. Oh, I don't know who this is, but she's adorable. Hi. Clean feet. I don't know who this is. It's probably obvious. I'm not very good at recognizing them as littles. Maybe this is a whiting. Um, I did. I do have one whiting, two blue. Doesn't have the right number of toes to be my dorking, but he's a little. Get some water. There you go. Here is the other Niederreiner. Oh, your wings are big. You need to be a girl. You're so pretty. Niederreiners are like a, a lemon-colored Bielefelder. They're really, really nice. Um, very good all-around bird. Uh, if you want meat, we don't do that. Um, we do eggs here. And, um, but good disposition, auto-sexing. There you go. Sorry, you guys. It's hot. Okay, we also have... I got two black copper morans from McMurray's line. Um, I can't tell. This is, I think this is a long shan. Okay, little feathered feet. I think this is a black long shan. Long shans, um, in addition to just being a great uh, heritage breed, um, I have several. If you follow us on Instagram, you've seen uh, Jiro, who is um, just my super sweet boy. Um, you may have also seen Angelo, who's from a private breeder. Um, I'll flip the camera around when I'm done, but Bart has like crawled onto the other side of the brooder and has built himself a little hidey hole and he's just happy to be there. I love that guy. Hopefully he's going to be bred this fall. Um, but Longshans lay uh, a brown egg, but it often has a bloom that gives it a purple color. 
um, and they're just gorgeous. So if you want those uh, those purple eggs that maybe you've seen in uh, rainbow baskets, they're probably coming from a long shan. At least that that's been my experience. All right. Ba, 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 ba. You, I think, are a black copper moran. Maybe clean legged. Got two black copper morans from Murray McMurray. Um, I haven't added any uh, morans this year um, until these two. Um, and I know that McMurray is working hard to change people's um, perception of uh, what it means to be uh, a hatchery quality bird. Um, and uh, I think they're really stepping up their game. And um, I needed to add some, so I added some from them. Uh, most of my other Morans. All of them are from private breeders. So, um, anyhow, bring them in. Not a problem. Hello, little you. Hi. I think this is another Longshan. Oh, my God. You are so adorable. Another thing I like about Longshans is they have those black um, kind of baby doll eyes, which I really like in chickens. Um, I'm not going to lie. Okay. Boop. There you go. Who are you? Are you another Longshan? I probably misidentified someone. So, he's just little, absolutely adorable, feathered feet. Check the invoice, make sure they didn't send me more than I thought. No? Hmm. And you? Who are you? Feathered feet, I'm thinking this is a uh, black copper moran. Marin. Boop. There you go, get a drink. And who are you? Oh, I think, are you one? Yes, I only got one of you. That's what was throwing me off. So these are Dorkings, and I don't know if I got the camera set up right, but can you see the extra toes? Dorkings have five toes. They're one of a handful of breeds. Dorkings and uh, mottled Houdans or Houdans. Um, and I know there's some others. Um, this is one of my favorite breeds. Uh, if you've followed us for a while or seen us on Instagram, you know Dork is one of the founding members in our main laying flock, and she is quite the character. I adore her. I had more uh, in the spring of last year that we were hoping to add to the flock, but uh, the Merrick's outbreak pretty much took all of them. Um, it was, it was, it sucks because they're just a great breed. Um, they're considered a really choice breed um, for meat. They have a long history of that. They, the breed probably dates back to Roman times um, in the days of Caesar. Um, but I just like them. They're just, they're personable. I like their, um, their feather pattern. Um, and uh, we have one uh, dorking rooster dork who is uh, kind of high strung, but uh, certainly not a bad guy. Um, and he's a survivor, knock on wood. He's, uh, he's been with us since the beginning, even though uh, clearly being a beta in the pecking order. But, um, so there's that. Now you, I don't know who you are. You've got clean legs. Know who you are, but you're welcome to be here. Okay, get you some water. Boop, there you go. And then another dorking. Boop, oh hi, baby. There's water, there's food in there. These guys shipped out on Monday, so picking them up this morning is a perfect time. This is uh, another one of the Fayumis. Hi. Uh, these birds, of course, being Egyptian, do really well in the heat. Um, they're less cold hardy, um, so this will be their first, my first year working with them to see how they do. But uh, I also have um, two Malay hens, um, an Asian breed that is awesome, and um, they're not, you know, they're more like a tropical bird, but they did fine um, in our setup here. So I think that will be good. And then, last but not least, another Fayumi. Boop. So the Fayumis are quite precocious. They should start laying. They could lay in as little as four and a half months. Um, the roosters are supposedly, they'll start crowing at two months. Um, no, five weeks, I think. So we'll see how that goes. 
Um, the others probably won't come online, or uh, it's such a technical term, but they uh, won't start laying until probably uh, January, I would say at the earliest. February is when they should start, which will be good. It'll be a nice birthday present for me. But these are part of our next generation uh, laying flock. So they will join um, the others that you've seen in the grow out pins as they're older. Um, there's another order arriving next week and then another group arriving at the end of September. And that is our 20, uh, 20 sorry, sweat my eyes. That is our 2021 through 2024 uh, main lane flock. So uh, yeah, we'll see how they do. Gosh, they're cute. All right. Uh, if you enjoyed any of this or are interested in more of what we do, feel free to follow us here on YouTube uh, or at Broad Shoulders Farm on Instagram and Facebook. I tend to post there more often than I post here on YouTube. Um, but uh, wherever you are, whatever you're up to, I hope that uh, you're being safe and keeping safe and that uh, the same can be said for those uh, that you love and care for. And uh, questions, concern, helpful critique, always welcome. Uh, I'm thinking I may add one more layer of plastic, uh, almost kind of like a, as a force multiplier in here, um, or bring in a wool blanket or some kind of cap on this to hold a little bit of heat that they're generating themselves. Uh, and I think I'm definitely going to get those uh, hunters uh, little packets that you crack and activate. I'm going to put them in with them tonight. Um, so fingers crossed that everybody does okay. All right. Y'all take care. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.